welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. The following interview is designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Your host, Derek Champagne, is the founder and CEO of The Artist Evolution, a full-service agency building successful brands, marketing tools, and campaigns, and also the author of the best-selling book, Don't Buy a Duck. And now, let's begin today's Leadership Series interview. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where our goal is to inspire you to become the best leader that you can be. I'm your host, Eric Champagne. We've got an awesome guest today. He is the founder of Pete and Pedro. You may have seen him on the TV show Shark Tank, not once, but twice. Uh, He is also the star of the Alpha M Project and founder of I Am Alpha M, YouTube sensation, serial entrepreneur. Welcome to the program today. Derek, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk. Man, Aaron, I, I, uh, I remember seeing you the first time on Shark Tank, and we won't stay on Shark Tank, I promise. But, <laughs> and, then, and then you popped up again the second time, and we've interviewed some other guests on Shark Tank. You know, your story really stood out to me. My business, I'm a branding and marketing consultant, and you have mastered the craft of, of building, building a brand. I mean, amazing. And so I said, man, we've got to get a hold of this, this amazing entrepreneur and talk to him. So, Wow. Thank you. That's that's incredible. Thank you so much for the compliment. I um, you know, I I I didn't realize how important branding was until really it was it was a few years ago, and um, I I think that I have done a pretty good job. There are some things that if I could go back in time and change, I would have. Uh, but you know, all things considered, yeah, it it, it is all about the brand, and and um, you know, with all my businesses, really trying to figure out and hone in on what that brand is, what the strategy is, and and what it looks like. So, thank you for the compliment. If someone were to ask you, if you were to meet a stranger, were to meet you and say, "Who are you? What do you do?" Because you've got so much going on. How, how in a sentence, yeah. do you introduce yourself? My wife put the kibosh on me telling people that I, uh, I, I make videos for a living. Yes. She's like, you sound like a pornographer. I said, okay, okay. So basically what I do, what I say that I do is, is I'm a content creator. Um, you know, first and foremost, it is my job to make video and to create content. And then from that content that I've been posting since 2008, it has led me to create other businesses and other vertical businesses off of this audience that I that I've been lucky enough to find. And so that's really what I do. I, I am an entrepreneur. I, I, there's nothing that gets me more excited and more fired up than thinking about business, new businesses, how I could sort of, you know, craft the business a little bit different than what what else is out there. And, and I just love business, man. That is mm. what gets me up in the morning. Well, you are definitely front and center in your business. And so I'm just curious, what are the pressures and then what's the upside of being that much of the face of your brand? On Shark Tank, the second time, was it Barbara that made an offer just so that you would endorse products that she sent your way? She wanted the deal. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, it, it, it's a blessing and a curse to be this basically front and center in your business. Um, you know, it, it's great. Because you know you you get to really drive the ship and and dictate what you put out there, and you're really only responsible for yourself and and you know what you say and all that good stuff. And so that's good. Um, you know the downside though, what I've come to realize is that if I ever wanted to exit any of my businesses, I can't. Right. And so you know I'm so entwined in every business that I have for the most part that that it's really difficult to to look long term in terms of a an exit strategy or mm. or getting out I I'm kind of stuck but the good news is that I I it took me so long to get here that I am seeing some success now and I wouldn't trade it for the world. So I don't know what 10 years from now looks like or even five years. Hell, I don't know what next year looks like, but I'm just going to, you know, continue to, you know, sort of go with my gut and, and figure out things as, as they come at me. And so I don't know if that answered your question. It absolutely does. And so, I mean, for our audience to put perspective, you've got, I think I looked at it today. You had over 1.5 million 
subscribers just there's just on your YouTube channel alone and then you've got millions and millions and millions of views and when you put something out and you've got hundreds of thousands of people that that watch and comment so you have a very captive loyal engaged audience which is what most of us spend our entire careers especially <laughs> post social media trying to figure out how to to capture yeah yeah it's and that's really what the focus is 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 on taking care of of my audience mm. and you know at the end of the day the number one priority that i have every day is getting up and creating content mm. it's what i need to do in order to drive all these other businesses and so you know not losing sight that you know even though today was a very busy day for example you know the first thing though i had to focus on is what got me here and that is creating content for people and just showing that that authentic self and and giving them content that's engaging and that's helpful and entertaining at the same time that that's awesome but you've created a hungry beast that <laughs> that needs con that needs to be continually fed content all the time haven't you yeah and that's the other upside and there there's there's two sides to every coin <laughs> in my world you know the upside is that yeah it's fantastic i i've got this very ravenous fan base and audience right. that consumes my content and whatever product they talk about or promote or, or my own. Uh, but on the other side, there's there's that, that beast that I need to keep feeding. I need to keep creating content. If I stop, everything stops. Mm -hmm. Wow. So can you take me back in time? Was there, can you, can you point to a, a time in your career or in your social media presence or whatever it might be where you, where you realize that you were about to take a crazy ride? I mean, there's so many people that create content and, and that do an okay job of it, but they don't all have the eyeballs. What, what for you, can you define a moment or did it just happen? It's been such a, see, that, that's what, what's so interesting. It took me, I think, six years to get to 100,000 subscribers. Okay. And so it was a grind. I started back in 2008. And then in the last 18 months, I gained 1.4 million. Wow. <laughs> and so, you know, so the overnight success took a whole lot longer than you would probably imagine. Sure. So it, it, you know what? It's funny. When I posted my first video, I didn't have any idea what I was really doing. I knew that I had a video camera. I knew I had a big mouth and I had a <laughs> mechanism to actually put it out there, which was YouTube. And I really didn't understand it that much. And I didn't understand the whole concept of subscribers or audience. I just thought, hey, I, I've got a video camera. Let me make a video. And at the time, I had an image consulting business helping you know men look better, feel better and all that good right. stuff. And this was after a very, very tumultuous business you know, explosion that that was a fitness center that I that I had prior to that. And so, you know, the moment that I actually posted my first video, though, and I got a comment, and somebody asked me a question, that was all it took. I was hooked at that point. Uh. Because I think for so long, I was really just kind of struggling to find out what my what my voice was, what my message was, and where my audience was. And I okay. I found a home on YouTube, right. and so it was it was finally for the first time I really felt like I I had an audience. And so from that point, it was like oh gosh, I got to put out more content and more. Right. Content. And I just and I and I fell in love with it. Well, what and an so, amazing platform that YouTube has been for you too. I mean, the other social media outlets as well, but there's I mean, nothing like. YouTube. No, it's amazing. Any, for any entrepreneur out there, if you are thinking about posting videos, don't think, do it. Right. And you know, a lot of people don't get started because, oh, I don't know if I'll be good enough, or I don't like myself on camera, or I don't like my voice. I sucked for the first <laughs> thousand videos I put out. And you know, you are going to stink when you first start, but you just need to keep putting it out there. There's nothing like YouTube. Um, you know, if you've got a customer, I mean, you get to know somebody. Like when you watch a video, you feel like you know this person. Right. And it's changed the game in terms of advertising and marketing. No longer do, you know, companies or where do you go to buy things or where do you go to learn things? It's it's YouTube, right. and so um, it is such an amazing power, amazingly powerful platform to let your customers get to know you and to meet you prior to actually asking them to spend money with you. Hmm. I, I know you're you're true to yourself and to your brand and to making sure that you take care of your listeners as evidenced by 
by not taking the deal. And, and initially, from from television appearances, it looked like you took a deal, but I know that you did not end up doing that. But but you do get endorsements, right? I mean, you, I think I saw that on Shark Tank where you've got companies that that do have you be their spokesperson, correct? <laughs> I've got more than you can imagine. Right. Um, <laughs> Something uh, you can yeah. share with us? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, right now I'm 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 I actually I'm so busy with with inquiries from different advertisers wanting mm. me to talk about their product and the brand that I actually hired a salesperson. <laughs> it was so successful and he did such a great job. I actually have all these friends that are content creators in social media as well. And so mm. I decided to sort of team up with him and create an agency. And so wow. we we do uh, we have an agency called Menfluential Media where hmm. we represent about 17 of the really big men's lifestyle influencers. Hmm. And, um, you know, in terms of brands, I've promoted everything from socks to I'm getting ready to um, – to promote a scotch, Glenn Livick, hmm. or Livick, I, I have to figure out how to yes. pronounce it before I actually pr- do the video <laughs> on Monday. Um, Livick, and uh, you know everything in between, uh, from Audible.com to clothing companies to grooming products, because I focus and and sort of so, sort of the content I create is generally like men's lifestyle. Right. Lifestyle encompasses everything. <laughs> and mm. so if it's pertaining to a man, I pretty much can can promote it. That's great that you have that lifestyle category. It gives you more opportunities for endorsements too. Then. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so take me back a little bit. You, you've been an entrepreneur for many years. I've, I've read up on your bio. I know that you've, you, you had your, your fitness center. But tell me a little bit about the success you experienced and, and the journey that you had early as an entrepreneur. How does, does any of that apply to you today? What did you learn from those early days? It's a, See, kind of a big that's, difference that's, to what you do that's now. That's the whole thing. My early days was not <laughs> they, they were, I don't know if I would 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 uh, qualify anything as successful <laughs> in my early days. But, um, but that's okay. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. me personally, I've had successful businesses that I've sold, and I've had some that have failed. And but those scars I got from the failures actually taught me a lot. Either to be cautious, and sometimes, and other times, it taught me to jump fast and move quickly. And and I was able to identify some of the duds. No, absolutely. And I wouldn't go back and trade anything for the world. Cool. Um, no, I, I've had a few businesses. I knew from a very young age I wanted to own a fitness center. And so I got a degree in business management, um, graduated, met a guy, and, and he was interested in starting a nutrition store. And so we started a nutrition store, and I knew pretty quickly that that wasn't some place I wanted to be. Um, he was actually selling drugs out of the back. And so <laughs> I wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but I knew that I, I prison wasn't a place that I would flourish. I'd right. be popular, but, but I would definitely would not do well. And so... Um, so essentially, from there, I, I opened my fitness center, and um, with a, I met a woman. We opened up a small personal training studio, and long, painful story short, that hmm. just just did not work out. We tried to expand. We we had some business partners that we shouldn't have taken, and ultimately, it ended up with us filing bankruptcy and me driving a beer cart at a golf course on weekends wow. to make ends meet. And this is when I'm a 30 year old guy, right? And so you know. I'm the type of entrepreneur that never has a plan B. I'm plan A mm. all the time until something happens that I realize I need to come up with a plan right. plan B. So, so with with those other six, those other failures, it just sort of led me to this this image consulting thing because it was something I could do that I really enjoyed that mm. I was doing a little bit with some of my male clients at the fitness center, and you know I I did that for a while and it ultimately then led to a YouTube video and, and the rest is kind of history. And so um, through all the failures, I, I have learned many, many, many valuable lessons. And so now I'm in a very unique position where I need to be very cautious and I need to work every day like somebody's trying to take it to me from me. Hmm. But I work, I wake up every morning with the with that, and I say to my my daily affirmation is all right. Don't f it up today, and I, I don't actually say f. I I say the real word, and um, and it's something that every day I just just got to stay focused and and do my best. And I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know how long I'll be on this ride, but you know, hopefully, I'll be smart enough to know when it's time to get off. Hmm. Where does your passion and your drive come from? Just uh, the the passion and the drive comes from just having this insane 
desire to be successful. And I never really understood what success meant to me. I thought it meant having a chain. At one point, I thought it meant having a chain of 27 nutrition stores. Right. And then after that, it was 150 fitness centers and nothing else was, was going to mean success. Huh. Uh, but, but the moment I, because I've always struggled with you know, the financial end of things. I mean, from growing up super poor to, you know, businesses that, that were, that were horribly unprofitable. Um, you know, the, the moment that I didn't think about money and have to worry about that was when I realized that I was successful. Because from that moment, when I took that weight or the burden of the financial pressures of, you know, just, 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 you know, it, it was almost like hustle to hustle to try and make ends meet. When I took that away, it allowed me to get super creative hmm. because I so much brain power and energy was focused on just trying to worry about my bills. That once that was gone, I realized that I could. I was free. I was right. free emotionally. I was free financially. I could do what I wanted to do, um, not spend lavishly, of course. And I still am the poor kid from Philly in my head, <laughs> even though I can afford, you know, to buy a nice watch if I want one. <laughs> right. Um, you know, it. So, so it's it's been. Uh, I don't. I don't even know where. What question you asked? I. I just sort of went off on a little bit of a. No, tangent. that was great. I. Yeah, I'd asked yeah, where your success. passion comes from, but yeah, success. And and so it's it's just just finally feeling like I'm validated. And, hmm. and, you know, aside from, you know, being financially secure now, the, the comments and the interaction and the engagement that I get from my audience really is what fuels me. I mean, I get up every day and think that I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I really feel like I have the ability to touch some lives and change them. And so that is super powerful and something that I don't take for, for granted for one second because wow. I know what the other side looks like. And, hmm. and this is just a very, very pleasant place to be, right. to say the least. So you feel satisfied. I mean, some people talk about success and, and yes, at a certain point when your needs are met, and, and I can relate I, to that too. But I'm satisfied in some regards, but I am I am hungry like mm. you wouldn't believe. Because I've tasted success now, now it's more. I want more. I can do more. I can right. run faster. I can pre- you know. I've got some friends that that operate in the the information product and the social media space. So they're all about creating info products mm. and. They are doing this so that they can create a lifestyle of freedom and flexibility and being able to vacation. And, and me, right now, I am in the mode of, all right, let's see how fast I can take this and far I can take this without, without crashing. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's all, all speed ahead for but me. But you get to be creative, too. And I, and I talk sometimes about the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and when you're in that, that lowest survival mode, which is, which is our instincts of hunger and, and shelter – and, and a lot of times businesses are making their decisions from there and they're not making their best decisions. So when your needs are met and you can be from the top of the pyramid and you can start to think more creatively, I think a lot of beautiful things are created there uh, that are even better than at the bottom of the pyramid, where, which is just a survival mode. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more, Derek. Love you said to it see much more gets. eloquently than I did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, no, you said it great. So let me. So let's talk a little bit about some of the content. You, yes, you do some amazing video content, and you're you're very good at it. But you, you're you're a guest blogger for big magazines too. You've got a best selling ebook, The Male Style Guide. What, what other types of content are you producing? Uh, that's you know I I I do a lot of podcasts. I don't personally do podcasts, but I, I'm a guest. I'm lucky enough to be asked to be on a bunch of podcasts. Primarily, it, it is it is the video. Um, I have a website that I post five videos a week. So, you know, every day putting out a video and, and the I am not a vlogger. I don't consider myself a vlogger that basically is somebody who just picks up a camera and, and talks to the camera as they go through their daily activities. Right. I, every video that I, that I, produce is scripted. Hmm. And so every morning I write a video. Wow. Uh, and so there's a lot of structure and I've sort of developed a, a method to make the content creation palatable and not all consuming like it used to be. And so that's one one great thing. But yeah, I produce just an insane amount of content. Hmm. And then um, I'm getting ready to, to launch a new business in the next two weeks. And so real excited about that. And, and hmm. I think that's actually going to be my big one. Wow. That's exciting. We look forward to following you on that. 
So, yeah, I watched one of your videos. I like your editing style, and it was I think it was the video where you uh, were announcing after Shark Tank kind of the results and did yeah. not take the deal, and I, I thought that was a cool editing style that you did. Very simple, very... It was, it was engaging. But I also liked your Alpha M project. Is that something that's ongoing? Yeah, it's something that I, that I started a few years ago. A, a gentleman sent me an email, and it just touched me. He was a big guy. He was like six, seven, like 450 pounds. And he just wanted to go shopping. And he was like, well, how much do you, yeah, I asked him, I go, well, what's your budget? He goes like $250. I'm like, Oh God. I'm like, if you let me film it, this could be cool. (laughs) And so, you know, and so then that was a lot of fun and people really liked it. And then I did like four more episodes and called it season one. And so now, um, what I do is I have a contest for my audience, they can submit videos of themselves and just a two-minute video. Let me know why you need a makeover, basically. And and um, then I let my, my audience vote on who they want me to fly here to Atlanta for an all-expense-paid makeover. And so I, I've been able to fund that through some very generous sponsors and amazing brand partners. And it's, it's incredible. I've had three seasons now. Yeah. I just wrapped the last episode last weekend. And um, I'll be doing it again probably early next year. But yeah, it's a great opportunity for me just to hang out, meet, and try and try and help some guys. Yeah, I watched that episode you're talking about. I think that was your very first one, right? Big Billy. Yep. Yeah, he's, I, I wondered how tall you were because he looks so so tall. <laughs> I'm super short at five foot six, and he's super tall. So I mean, that, that was cool. He was he's a big guy. He's a big yeah. dude, and the thumbnail in and of itself was was a hit. So that's why that video <laughs> went well because people are looking at little old me standing next to big old him, and it was just like Andre the Giant versus little Jack and the Beanstalk. It was uh, it was great. And and you hit it right. That that thumbnail is is a big part of of some of those click throughs. That was great that you did that. I I'm, I get fascinated by this too because I, I did live in Los Angeles for many years. So a lot of my friends are producers and writers and as almost everybody is out there and they're, they're all making shows and trying to get views and, and there's, it's so saturated, especially since reality television and, and YouTube and social media has emerged and taken over. But I, I find most of them don't have the views that they would like. So I love seeing that you're doing that and producing good content and then putting it out there and you've got that many people. I, I saw one you had 400 plus submissions for one of those, yeah. those episodes. That's, that's, that's incredible. And then hundreds of thousands of views on each episode. That's really cool that you're creating your own content and just putting it out there like that. Yeah, and and it's funny because people think that it's a big, you know, production crew. It's me and one guy with a camera. <laughs> That's it. And and we put it together and we have a lot of fun and they're 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 just fun episodes and it's it's really great to to do a little bit of something for somebody and, and help them sort of over a, a hard time or a rut or whatever it may be. Yeah, that's cool. So if we can go back and talk for just a minute, you talked about content creation and you encourage our listeners, if you have a business and you haven't been creating content, if you haven't been doing video content, do it. Give us a few shortcuts. I know what, what have you found that has been effective in either identifying what's of interest to your target of the type of content you can put out and produce any, any tips that you have? In terms of the content, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, you know, I would start with what you feel your what you feel other people would be interested in watching. And then you're going to find out pretty quickly if they are, <laughs> because I always say that if you've got a message, it will find its its audience. Right. And so that's one of the issues that a lot of guys are like, well, I don't know. It's so late in the game and I haven't started it or I'm not tech savvy. And you are listening to the least tech savvy guy that, that, you know, because, huh. you know, the, you joke about my video editing style. Well, that I think is like super high tech and it is just the most basic <laughs> jump cuts you can ever find. And I've never used music really just because I just don't understand it. And so, you know, don't wait until perfection has happened because it never will. Hmm. Um, you don't need fancy equipment. You need a, a simple backdrop. You need a camera, something that can take take movies. A lot of people are using their iPhones. And so you don't need a, a bunch of equipment. It's just about putting out that first video and then putting out something else. The other thing I will say is consistency is king. Um, some hmm. people make the critical mistake where they'll put out a piece of content and then they'll wait three months. I would say that the, the general consensus is once a week you need to be putting out something. Hmm. And you need to do it consistently. Same day, same time. Your audience will 
reward you for consistency and and that 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 content that you're actually putting out. Um, you know, the other thing is if you've got somebody in your industry who you've seen their video, go to their channel. Look to see what their most popular videos are. You can see that on everybody's channel. And that's probably a pretty good place to start <laughs> in terms of content. It's sort of like hacking popular content. Go find people that are competing in your industry, see what video they've done that is their top or their top three, and that's a great place to start. That's great. Is there a certain style that works? Humor, honesty. Honesty. Oh my goodness, you just hit the nail <laughs> on the head, Derek. Here's what I have learned over my illustrious YouTube career <laughs> is that the audience will reward you for being authentic. Um, when I first started, I really didn't know what my voice was. And so I looked at other popular YouTubers and I tried to duplicate. I tried to be a little bit funny and crude and, and I tried to be shocking. Right. And those videos, for the most part, have all come down because I was embarrassed <laughs> of the way that I portrayed myself. Right. And I really started to see a difference and a, a shift in the level of engagement when I drop the crap, drop the act, and just mm. talk from the heart. Wow. And so authenticity is king. You know, they used to say that, that content is king. Authenticity is absolutely king. Wow. Um, you can't beat that. Hmm. Any other advice you want to share? <laughs> uh, don't get your feelings hurt. <laughs> but yes. that's possible. Understand this, that YouTube, if you're going to put yourself out there, you got to have thick enough skin to understand that there you're not going to please everybody. Um, I joke that I could be having I could have a video teaching blind kittens to read and somebody would have something <laughs> negative to say about it and me. Right. All right. It doesn't matter. And they get personal too, don't they? Yeah. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? If I have to hear one more time about the 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 birthmark in my eye or my voice or my ears or my are you kidding me? It's uh yeah, it's not for the uh, the thin skinned individual. Right. But just understand this that you are going to have the negativity. Do not engage them. One mm -hmm. of the mistakes that I made thinking that I you know, hey, I'm a reasonable guy. I'm just going to try and reason with them. Oh, that is the absolute worst thing you can ever do. Just <laughs> Move on. Don't and, and if it bothers you that much, post your video and do not read the comments. But we are right. gluttons for punishment, and that's that's not very, very. So you do read the comments, don't you? I, for the first day, I'll read them, <laughs> and then it's like, okay, I gotta move on to the next one. And but it, it's crazy because no matter how many videos I put out, no matter how much positive love and encouragement I get, I still have my feelings hurt. Right. And it still stings when somebody mm. is, you know, saying something negative about you. It never goes away. And anybody who says it doesn't matter or they don't notice it, they're lying to you because we're human. And we, right. we, we create content. We put ourselves out there for the betterment of others. And when somebody, you know, somebody who just has a voice and a keyboard you know, wants to rip you apart and tear you down, it, it still stings. Do you do you take their comments when you see them, and does does it affect you at all in a way that you say, you know what, they uh, enough people have commented on this way, I'm going to try to shift, or do you ignore it and, and and keep the course that you're doing? I used to see if if they're telling you something is wrong fundamentally with your message or your business, or you hear it enough, then yeah, you might want to take a look at yourself, and that's right. one. Of, as you know, Derek, one of the hardest things to do is actually Ooh. look at yourself, you know, be introspective and be like, okay, I'm doing this wrong. I need to change. Because right. as entrepreneurs, we get something in our head and we think it's right. And then you tell your friends, you tell your loved ones, and everybody tells you, oh my gosh, it's fantastic because right. they don't hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. But when you've got somebody who's unbiased and they don't have to sit next to you at Christmas dinner... And enough of those people tell you that something is wrong or you're doing something, it's probably not them and it, it could be you. Mm. And so be flexible and nimble enough in your ideologies and your, your content creation that you can adjust when, when you think that it's time. And that's one of the beautiful things about the internet as well. You might put out a piece of content that's terrible, but people have incredibly short attention spans and memories. <laughs> and so they'll forget about it by the next 
two days and, and the next piece of content you put out. Um, you know, also don't, don't be something that you're not. And that's one of the, the hardest lessons that I had to learn. I, I tried to be something that I wasn't. Um, people can see through that. There, the internet is full of imitators and, and frauds and fake, you know, personalities. Just right. be yourself and you will be successful. Now, what success looks like to you versus me, that's up for interpretation and you've got to figure that out. But content right. creation is an amazing thing. And um, if, if you have something that needs to be said, I, I highly recommend you say it. I love it. Be authentic, be yourself, have thick skin, but be willing to be introspective and make improvements and be able to handle the criticism. And if, it's, if it is you and something you need to adjust, be willing to do that. See, you just took you just said what I it took me 30 minutes to you, talk you about said, it. You, you said it way it better up. and I took <laughs> notes while you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Aaron, thank you so much for being our guest. Give us a couple of websites that we can go to and learn more about you. Yeah, you know, the easiest place to find me is YouTube. Just go to YouTube and 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 search Alpha M M is in male. Um, or if you, you search that in Google, you'll find my website, I am alpha M dot com. Um, that's it. Go there. You'll find my stuff and and I, I promise you that, you know, at first you might not know how to take me, but I, <laughs> but I, I, I tend to grow on people like fungus. So <laughs> just and, be, and you are being authentic. So we exactly. Know that's you. So just, just bear, bear that in mind. Aaron, thank you again for being our guest. We really appreciate it. And I, I know you got a, something new and exciting on the horizon. So we'll be following you closely and look forward to uh, seeing what that is that you're about to launch. Derek, thank you so much. Take care, Aaron. You've been listening to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. This interview was designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Take a five-minute complimentary marketing assessment for your business. Whether you're a startup or an established brand looking for more quality customers for your business, this confidential assessment will help you identify the next logical steps for appropriate marketing tools, strategy, and development for making sure your branding and marketing campaign is a success. Visit AssessMyMarketing.com today. That's AssessMyMarketing.com.